Hi, my name is Yu Zhe Yang. I'm currently a fifth year PhD student at MIT CCL, and I work with Professor Dina Katabi. And my research is on machine learning for health, and especially I design reliable machine learning models to advance human disease, health, and medicine field. So I'll be talking about the project about Parkinson's disease. Uh, so we develop a AI-based biomarker for Parkinson's disease, especially for the early diagnosis of the disease. Parkinson's disease is the fastest grow growing neurological disease in the world and the second most neurological um, disorder just after Alzheimer's disease. So there are over 1 million people living with PD as of 2020 in the United States and 10 million people are diagnosed with PD uh, worldwide. So currently there's a, there are no effective biomarkers for diagnosing PD. Typically, uh, PD was diagnosed in the clinic with motor symptoms such as tremor or rigidity or, uh, or balance issues. However, when those motor symptoms first appear and a diagnosis is made in the clinic, the disease has already been progressed for tens of years and this will lead to a late diagnosis. Typically, when the disease was diagnosed in the clinic, there are already 50 to 80% of the dopamine producing neurons died off. So there's a very strong need to develop early disease diagnosis biomarkers, and especially those can be repeatedly measured in our own homes. So in this project, we use a person's nocturnal breathing signals as a biomarker for Parkinson's disease diagnosis, as well as tracking its progression over time. So to collect one's nocturnal breathing data, we ask, we ask the participant to either wear a breathing belt uh, on their chest over the night or even install a wireless device in their own home without any physical contact. The wireless device will emits, emit the radio signal and the signal will bounce off our body and by analyzing the reflection of the signal, we can extract the breathing signal by the participant. After extracting the breathing signals by either of these two methods, we then fit the breathing signal into a neural network model designed by our team and the AI model produces two outputs. The first one is whether the participant has the disease or not. And the second one is if they have assessed, further assessed their severity. I think the most challenging part about this project is, well, you know, the nocturnal breathing signal are pretty high dimensional and pretty dense because we usually sleep for like eight to 10 hours. But the output signal of the disease is very sparse. It only almost contains only one bit of information of whether the per person has PD or not. So this will create some problem that the network might find some spurious correlation in a pretty dense training data, but learn nothing about the actual disease at all. So our solution was motivated by the fact that PD is a neurodegenerative disease. So we further look at our brain activity during our sleep. And in particular, we asked the network to also predict the, our nocturnal EEG activity during our sleep as an auxiliary task. So this is good because EEG signal can reflect our brain activity and is highly related to the disease itself. And in the meantime, the EEG signal is also pretty dense across the whole night, which can prevent the model learn unrelated information to the disease itself and, re and further regularize the training. I think the most exciting part about this project is we show the initial evidence of this model to enable early diagnosis of Parkinson's disease. So in our dataset, there's a special group that are diagnosed in six years later in the dataset, but they were not clinically diagnosed six years before. But according to our discussion earlier, we know that even they were not diagnosed based on clinical symptoms, they're very likely to already have the disease onset at six years before. Although at that time, it was not clinically diagnosed based on motor symptoms. So we further test our model directly on this prodromal high-risk group with age and gender match control group. And surprisingly, we found that the model produces significantly higher risk scores for the prodromal group, indicating that the model has the ability to identify the disease even before the actual clinical diagnosis. 
So I'm currently finished my final year of graduate study and I will be soon on the uh, academic job market to pursue a professorship career. I wanted to stay in the academia because I want to conduct research, um, again, like to extend my research to the broader AI for Health community and try to make an impact there and also incorporate my models into the actual clinical trials or clinical systems to make a difference for patients. And also, I want to inspire another generation of uh, students or researchers more into the machine learning for health community to advance the real-world healthcare problems. Mm -hmm.